I wanted to tap into what is common to us and take it to a different level. I always wanted to make a spaceship film because I always am very attracted towards it. But I also wanted to make sure that it's believable. That it's in India. It's about India's story. First of all, uh, congratulations on Cargo, the release and everything. So, how is the response? How are you feeling? No, I'm feeling exciting. It's uh, very nice that uh, actually we never anticipated because we always thought uh, when it was releasing on Netflix, I was actually making a WhatsApp friend list group, like you know, ki jao dekho, jao dekho. You know, I thought it would be like that that I'll have to push people to go and watch it, mm. but it organically kind of uh, really a lot of people saw it, and I saw so many people. still like even yesterday i saw a very lovely animation painting that some kid had made so there are people who are still discovering the film they're still watching it and i was finding it uh, very heartwarming like and also very grateful that they actually were seeing it so i was feeling very nice yeah it's kind of timeless right in a way the the story that kind of it touches everybody at all ages kind of yes 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 and also yeah true and also you know frankly speaking also the uh, this whole whatever 2020 has done to us as mm-hmm. people like you know we never had a pause we never hit pause in so many years we have just been working hard all of us have been just been focused towards goals and all so 2020 forces us to you know reflect on life and stuff and i think the film came at a time where it was uh, you know um, touching the same buttons like in a way so it was in- interesting like yeah so i think that also kind of helped yeah so i wanted to ask you a little bit about your film uh, like background actually you come from film school right and that's i i couldn't find a lot of your short films but i'd seen your short film time machine before uh, cargo had ever come out so there's a yeah. interesting theme in a lot of your films like that uh, kind of reflected in each of those films at least these two what i thought was there's this optimist and a pessimist kind of having conversations so what is that about like uh, is that something very personal to you i uh, uh, i think overall i do get very much attracted to duality of life in general right mm-hmm. uh, you know and i think cargo that way is a lovely thing because it talks about death but it also talks about life in a way by, by examining death we are investigating about life we are trying to understand more what's the purpose of life and that duality is always there i think in me also in fact a lot of people always tell me that you always have two very strong opposite uh, views on everything and that is always true because i always examine from extremely two different angles from my this point of view to that point of view so there is i always feel that like when you uh, pursue a idea uh, uh, you know till the end you will figure out that there is an op- something opposite to that is also true about that particular idea like in general i just feel that and uh, i think that was the same thing in time machine also and even other films like you know that i you haven't seen so there was one which is called as reflection where a boy goes and gets a robot wife and calls it i wife mm-hmm. because he thinks it's not uh, like you know uh, and it's a way of strange world where everybody is colorful but this guy is all gray so mm-hmm. he gets a colorful robot and realizes that you know it's still it's not perfect still because he finds that you know she's so colorful and i'm so dull so he decides to go and become colorful so he goes through the process of becoming colorful but the robot who was trapped in his house which was essentially black and white decides to turn herself black and white so it was like that like you know that uh, again like again the contrast of it that we both we whatever we aim for might not see the truth is so subjective and we always as you i mean of course the scientific facts are objective but in general our perception of everything about our life about everything is very subjective and i think by just uh, uh, questioning it in different through different point of views i think we arrive at it in a nice way see we will never have a solution we we'll probably always have more questions and that's what my film also does it just throws more questions to you but uh-huh. maybe it, by asking more questions maybe you have probably you know gone a little forward in your understanding of your life like you know that's the whole thing mm-hmm. so so yeah. regarding that i wanted to ask one more small thing was i watch a lot of sci-fi and movies and stuff right i see that sci-fi normally or normally reaches somewhere a little more cynical or at least the ending is very cynical in yeah. both the films that i've seen of yours has a very optimistic but peter sweet kind of endings but they're always optimistic yes, yes. they're quirky yeah. Yeah. so yeah. where does that come from yeah i think lot of sci-fi in general has always been dystopian there's a general perception that see anyways f- uh, people fear the unknown so lot of science fiction stories especially the earlier science fiction stories always assume the future which is filled with either robots or ai or whatever is dystopian so mm-hmm. that's a very dystopian dystopian sci-fi and that has been the 
dominant uh, uh, for story form as far as sci-fi is concerned because it also became very popular and it's a good way it gives you comfort to thinking that okay, chalo today we are good but if we just do too much if we start having robots for doing everything then maybe they'll kill us you know so those are the things those are the warnings that they provide but i think in i don't have i always feel that any tool you give to a person will have both the strength and weakness of the person using that tool for example if you see a scissor it could be a device to kill someone but it could also be to cut something and create something beautiful artwork like you know so the tool and i also feel science fi sci-fi or all these artifacts or the instruments that sci-fi deals with they are not necessarily a tool that will lead to destruction it is depending on how uh, you know how the person using it uh, uses it so that's what uh, i always feel that that's why i always go bitter sweet because everything lies within you that's what i feel like uh, there's a very lo lovely i think there was some inventor who said that every invention has the strength and weakness of the inventor so uh, you know and uh, i think uh, uh, if you want to know about an inventor but what kind of person is you just have to examine the invention and what the invention is doing you know capable of doing what he's talking about like so it's a sort of a distillation of that person so i also follow that and i also that's why for me everything it's always like you know i'll never say that you know everything will be proper everything will be happy and you know everything will be awesome is also not my zone like you know that disney happy and ending that also i cannot give but i also don't think everything will be super destructive i always feel that we will navigate it you know based on what are in our in our compasses so that's that's why i guess my films go go like that See, specifically about cargo right so there was this particular thing i saw that you've taken some sci-fi uh, elements like at least tropes of sci-fi tropes taken mythology and use existential questions specific to our times right so where does that journey come from like how, how did the idea of a cargo come and what was the process of scripting it into all these ideas that you had putting them into this uh, distillation into this Yes, yes. So I guess I, I have since childhood I've been really steeped into Indian mythology because I really consumed a lot of those Panchatantra books and I used to write stories around that time. So I had always, always been steeped into it. So it was like something. It was always in you know one of the memory cells. So always I would be accessing it all the time. And a few, a uh, few years ago, I had made a uh, like you know experimental, not really a short film. I had made something which was like Ravan. Uh, i don't know if you've seen it it with it it stars vasan bala as the, who's the director so basically we are shot it on the roof of uh, this production house called phantom and he where he was just a out of work actor so ravan ka uh, you know 100th descendant or i think i don't know not 100 i think 18th descendant or something who actually has 10 heads and he is just using advantage of this to do like really cheap ads like you know thus headache ke liye you know those, those really low budget ads so he does that he makes a living like that and people are worried that he's the last of his kind and he will go extinct so basically i was bringing a mythological character from our story books to our uh, you know current urban landscape and it was so much fun and it we had done it like with zero uh, as such budgets and zero anything so uh, but so when we uh, like you know shot it i thought that this was very interesting i really liked that idea so uh, when i was making cargo again um, i wanted to tap into our collective consciousness and you know sci-fi india mein abhi hum log kuch if we make a sci-fi that is a copy of western sci-fi then the whole purpose will be defeated we have to make a homegrown sci-fi so i wanted to tap into what is common to us and take it to a different level i always wanted to make a spaceship film because i always i'm very attracted towards it but i also wanted to make sure ki believable hai ki india mein hota hai india ki story hai so you know that's what i was very keen on and i guess that's how yeah that's okay. yeah uh, so in that sense what do you think is like the future of sci-fi in india see i see you as like opening doors for a lot of indie filmmakers because they don't have to keep doing just drama comedy and stuff you can actually do fantasy sci-fi in a budget that you have because you can make it quirky interesting small scale so what do you see as a future for sci-fi in india i think it's very promising yeah because i'll tell you we are like maybe not just me even like a five year younger generation right just a five year younger generation 
they are crazy about sci-fi because I'll tell you till uh, 10 years ago when since I, I've been pitching for sci-fi for like six, last six, seven years and all the producers I pitched to, they grew up in a very non-sci-fi cultural environment. So hmm. if I would go and tell them a science fiction story, they would feel ki, what is this? Like who will make it? You know, this is, you know, but the uh, me especially, we grew up on star movies. So we were seeing Alien, we were seeing Terminator. The younger generation had even more things that they saw, like in general, like, even like, so for them, it doesn't feel like a remote or alien concept. Sci-fi feels a very normal extension of the storytelling or the stories we hear. So I personally feel that it is a very uh, promising stage we are in. Uh, because also post my film screenings, we had few screenings in Mumbai Film Festivals. I, had, I was approached by a lot of writers who work in science fiction. Mm -hmm. And I saw their writing and I was like, this is fantastic. So it's very positive. And also I know that a lot of mainstream directors are making sci-fi. And they are making it with good budgets also. So I am paying more for indie guys who will not have budget. They can make it like without worrying. But I'm sure a lot of people with budgets will also make it now. A little more technical about your work, right? Like one thing I uh, observed again between Time Machine and Cargo where your props and your sets are very specific and they're like really quirky and interesting. I see a lot of personality at least. So do you write them into your script or like do you work with people to like build them over time? It's a two-way process. I do write a lot in the script. Like there are a lot of things because I like tinkering in general. So I like a lo lot of, write a lot of stuff which is in the script. For example, the shredder or this or that. Mm -hmm. I, it's in the screenplay. But I think also I always collaborate with very inventive production designers. And when I provide, come go to them with a script with this list of this, I think they also get stimulated and they also come up with like really cool ideas. For example, in Cargo, uh, we had a lot of things that I had written in the script, but how the cargo arrives, we didn't know how it will come. And that was my production designer, Mayu Sharma, who came up with the idea, why can't they slide in, like, you know, that. And I always used to say, like, train just a hota, but, you know, train just a train station, well, a budget, new, like, you know, so say, why not we just make a train just a double and let them just slide in, like. So actually, if you see behind the scenes, it was just a sofa on a slider. And five <laughs> people used to push people. <laughs> so that's how the cargo was used to arrive. Huh. That's how we did it. Like there was no mechanism. We just fooled the mechanism in there. So you, there's a lot of work you do with your production designer. Then. I, I love, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a, I also, I always feel that the space is one of the characters. So like, you mm -hmm. know, who doesn't speak like, but uh, uh, space is a character in your film, especially in science fiction. While you have Vikrant and Shweta, the spaceship is also the third character who's observer to their stories, who is in a way uh, uh, interacting with them, you know? So I, for me, space is very important, whether it's time machine, whether it's cargo. So, and I love the details because I think there's so much you can build the world using the details and you can make the world look more real mm -hmm. because everything is make-believe, right? So in this small, small things is when you, when your world will start looking more real than it is. So, uh, and the whole, um, even the social economic things can like just bleed in, like, you know, the kind of things that they're carrying and like, you know, for example, uh, Pras does the thing that he's trying to fix it, you know, how it is clumsy. So it is like, you know, it is helping the actor also. The prop is helping the actor perform better. So I am very particular about those things. So uh, continuing from there, you're actors, right? You're working with Sweta Tripathi and Vinkan Masi, who like some of the best actors coming out of Bollywood right now or in any industry in India. So uh, when you're working on this, there's certain things that you can't explain to them until the post-production work kind of happens. They can't really see it, right? The sets are all like in different places and stuff. Yes. So how do you get them to like just live in this space? Because clearly like at least one axis of it will be empty it'll just be a camera there or like doesn't feel like a spaceship right when you're in there it feels to us yes, not yes, to them yes. so how do you get them to immerse or get lost in it yeah so this is a very uh, fantastic question and actually um uh, that's true like when we were uh, uh, shooting this like when vikrant was sitting on all these panels he had to do multiple things for various things and you know what is the function of each but, uh, button we had just pasted some of them they were some of them were not even moving they were so poor. only few old knobs would move and stuff but uh, you know um again you know going back to the fact that these actors are so intelligent and that was the reason i took these actors because they their mind is very sharp mm -hmm. and uh, you know and their observation skills are really re really very good so Vikrant had, in fact, for every button designated a function that this does this, this does this. And he had, he knew a lot more. Like, you know, if my if there is a spaceship hits a meteor, this is what I'll be touching. If it's just the regular routine, 
work of cargo coming and all these are the buttons so he was the one who was making the in all that green screen and all which of course they had to you know surrender to whatever uh, like you know the suspension of disbelief within the uh, whole chaotic set they found that small things those small buttons that they felt that like you know this is what is uh, certain for them and this is what will represent reality for them and they mm-hmm. stuck to it with a lot of sincerity so i think that was uh, uh, very cool like i think it lot of credit goes to actor but uh, i remember in time machine we had done one sequence i don't know if you remember time machine there's one sequence where they go for the time travel uh-huh. and it was only green screen like there was nothing for the actors they were just in, sitting inside two boxes and i'm telling them a dinosaur is coming that is coming <laughs> so uh, i mean i remember they said ki aati we don't know what we are doing we are just following your cues and even like everybody else in the set was saying ki we are don't know what is happening i said don't worry i i know and you know and i'm thankful that i have a very good vfx person zanish mehta with whom i have been working for so long that he gets me and i also with because i work with him so much i understand vfx and i understand what all we can bring in you know without being uh, completely wild so uh, I think that also helps in a way. So it's mm. essentially it comes down to that whole team working together over there. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, and you were talking about VFX, right? That was also something I was fascinated by. I don't know how big your budget was. I'm assuming it's a little lower than most sci-fi films get. But you had yeah, really lower cool... than most non-sci-fi films. <laughs> had really I'm not kidding <laughs> yeah, yeah I can understand so from uh, outside you had uh, some exterior shots right how did you achieve those those look like like really good like I won't like I can say you know like uh, gravity I won't say gravity but le- they look really cool no no we were very lucky I think uh, part of it was also uh, one of our partners was fundamental pictures which owns this uh, post production CJ studio called Ventana Mm-hmm. so there there was a team working very hard on these particular five six shots and they just allowed us five shots i wish i could have not more but like that's all it was but yeah again uh, i was i always believe that you know uh, we don't know what is the fate of the film we don't know much but we just know that just as a responsibility what we have taken is a first spaceship film from india we should not look like a joke i mean and i used to tell them that and i used to say that tomorrow i'm very sure in 5 years or in 10 years there'll be 10 other spaceship films like you mm-hmm. know and our i used to tell them he, they all will have certainly lot more budget than we will have but we should always be mentioned that like you know what we did in terms of style what we did in terms of being genius in you know in our design should always stand out should always be spoken about because we are the first and first has some responsibility like a mm-hmm. little bit more like than everyone else and so there was a lot of uh, that pet talk that used to go i used to even go and tell there was one old man like you know i found out that he has kids so i used to say that imagine your kids seeing it and thinking that your father made this like you know things like that so we used to and because there's that detailing takes a lot of efforts like those small small detailing so there's a lot of painful efforts on that machines and stuff so uh, we were trying to be perfect in the details and cargo is all about details we were trying to perfect the details like you know Uh, not really uh, we knew on macro level we could have done lot more but we didn't have the budget for it but at micro level we was trying to get things right uh, one more thing i wanted to ask was this this film right you have a big canvas like at least uh, in scope what you wanted to do so but it came on ott right do you would you have preferred it in theaters or uh, are you uh, happy with the the uh, what, what ha is- so actually uh, uh, frankly speaking technically the you know, film is uh, like a more way more enjoyable in theaters because it's a very immersive experience hmm. so and especially we had few theatrical screenings so i knew the way audience were responding in the theater like the collective you know uh, uh, viewing experience of the film was very strong uh, my sound designer sanee john and my uh, music director shazan uh, they worked very hard on the music and the sound thinking it will be like you know we did an dolby atmos mix like the the, wow. the, the, the grandest mix and with like lowest budget we, we were we really wanted it to be like that because every sound was you know every sound is artificially put in the film so you know that's why it is very important so we really took a lot of care in that so my team definitely wanted it to be theatrical i know that but you know also i felt feel like now to of course corona is there but even otherwise you know our kind of films sometimes come in theaters we don't but we don't know 
you mm-hmm. know it needs to be supported by equal amount of marketing budget and advertisement budget which we never had like mm-hmm. and i knew we would have not been able to get it so netflix that way was good because you know at least that cost of ours was, was not you know we didn't lose i mean we never had the money for marketing so the netflix thing when it took over netflix did the mar- marketing and you know then it because and also it has such a wider reach and netflix once a person takes a subscription they will give chances to independent and different kind of films but it, mm. for people to give chance to a little offbeat film by going to a theater is always a very tricky affair we don't mm. know how it will pan out so that's always there yeah so, so uh, for me i think it was great that we had a netflix release it was a much wider release a lot more people saw it Mm-hmm. so it's fine for us yeah so what do you think about this whole trend like just uh, in a macro level about the film industry right most everything is going to come on otts and the new uh, the recent warner brothers announcement it's saying most of their slate yeah. simultaneously is going to release what do you see as the future of theaters and or pro- distribution in a way so i was just uh, uh, seeing the trend of how things had happened in last last pandemic which was in 1920s or something so mm. when the whole uh, threat of pandemic was lifted actually people went back to going out by double speed like you know it was not that things went back to normal it was like people were like raring to go out and like you know just enjoy because they were deprived for so long mm. so i also feel that of course our theaters are suffering and you know the whole one leg of the industry is suffering we We don't want that. We don't want OTTs. We want OTTs, and we want theaters also because any competition is always good for the filmmaker. And all films are have different demand. Like uh, I, I would say that maybe if next film I'm making, which is a great grand sci-fi, if I need the budgets, I need to go theatrical because an OTT will never be able to make the money to make it super grand, mm-hmm. which theaters will aff- afford you. Like I know for now, it looks like that the OTTs are like winning hands down. but i think it's a matter of couple of years we just have to sit tight and then it will just go back to i feel that like theaters will you know fight back and mm-hmm. people will also defend the theaters because wo otts may be na wo acha hai ki one two years mein people also get saturated with this so they also look for a better experience and then they realize oh my god theater is so much better but it is also good that otts never never getting a chance no a list film was coming on you know otts it's by definition called over the top it's like over the top of theatrical tv and then ott so yeah. now it is not the case so for mid budget films ott is so perfect because hmm. mid budget films or the independent filmmakers or young filmmakers who were starting out they never had an avenue theaters all said and done all romance about theaters all said and done it used to give really bad time slots to all these independent films they used to give 9 am in the morning and you know like really bad time slots so for these films like you know it's very good that ott is there and it's such a flourishing this whole thing corona thing gave ott is also a chance to prove that they could be mainstream in terms of entertainment for people so in a way that is good like i think both uh, mediums will be stronger in longer term for now of course ott looks stronger because of the whole corona thing but you no know, vaccine <laughs> is there so. circumstances in its favor basically yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes yes ha yeah. so something more personal right as i was researching about you there was a specific thing i read you talked about how uh, when you were low you uh, you would talk to your characters or you would talk in the voice of your characters right which is a fascinating idea i'd never thought of it that way so where does that uh, idea come from i uh, know it was uh, i think uh, i have had a very long struggle car it was obviously not my first screenplay though it's a screenplay i wrote in shortest amount of time because of the circumstances but there were screenplays that i wrote for a year or some screenplays i wrote for one and a half years that i really wanted to make and they were they were very dear to my heart like because of the amount of love you gave to those characters and those stories uh, but again them being sci-fi and producers being close to sci-fi especially like five years ago i used to get really depressed that like you know so sometimes you you would get defeated after going for pitches going and pitching to people you know with so much enthusiasm telling your story and then saying ki you know the story is very nice but we don't know how people will so we don't know sorry thank you <laughs> so you would always feel like you and this not just once it happens like too many way too many times then then mm. you also get disappointed so my friend uh, zen who with whom i use usually write he told me that like you know you have to also think that if you give up on these stories these stories will never exist mm. because you are not also making a, a regular story you are making very unique worlds with unique characters so you have to know that they will never find existence like they die if your hope or your enthusiasm dies 
so and so uh, he used to think that you should feel that like you know should find encouragement with that thought so i used to just sit and fantasize that maybe they're just sitting and i'm discussing with them ki kya tumhara film reject wapas tum logo ka script reject ho gaya like you know <laughs> i i used to have that kind of thoughts with them like you know it was just a, you know finding company with your characters because anyways you spend so much time with your characters than you spend with sometimes with the real people also hmm. so i used to do that a lot uh, even now i had a i was writing some story and i found a, a very funny image which was so perfect that if the character i was writing was real i would have definitely whatsapped it to him like this is such a <laughs> lovely image like it is a joke on your personality like or something like that so yeah you have to assume they are real at least while you're writing you're carrying them for so long like yeah so i <laughs> yeah it's just a silly thing i do yeah that's <laughs> not silly it's really it's uh, it's profound in a way it's sweet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, uh, you were telling like it took a long time to get to cargo, right? Was so what was the process of getting cargo greenlit? Like who who were post the process of cargo? Basically, I decided I'll make this film no matter what. I'll shoot on my phone. I'll have a green screen curtain and I have two characters sitting. So mm. cargo first. I started. I was like, let's try single location and let's try like minimum characters. And if you want more characters, let them come and go for one day. Let them not be like. Sitting in the set for thirty days because उतना अच्छा खाने का भी budget नहीं होगा लेकिन you know, वो तो thirty so I used to think like I was thinking it was really uh, cargo was uh, in fact there's a joke I crack with one of my other friends that like now we don't write based on कि oh this issue is attracting us so we should write we write based on कि अरे ये जगह है ये जगह है ये actor है तो चलो story लिखते हैं so it's sort of a jigsaw kind of puzzle that you try to solve so cargo was exactly that I had a studio available for some reason. I always thought that that studio will be a spaceship. So I was writing a story in a spaceship, which was very different. Uh, but I was very sure that I am making it. So whomever I would be meeting, I would be saying, "Ki I am having this studio whole of December. I am shooting it in December. No matter what, I'll figure out. Like you know, I, you have a stu. I have the studio. I have that camera. So uh, let me. I want to shoot it. Like that was the attitude, and I think that's the only thing that got the film made. And I was not at all a. Uh, Strict on anything. Like earlier, you're very perfection. You try to be perfectionist about your sci-fi. Like while making, of course, you forget. But like when I was putting the project together, I used to say, "Okay, Jo, like, okay, okay, you know, aja, 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 like, you know, let's do this, like, yeah." So, are you bringing any of your older scripts to a screen, or are you planning to? What are you working on next? Yes, one of the scripts that I'm very close to, and that actually had a very unfortunate reason why it was not made. It was uh, basically ready to be made with a very strong cast, not just Indian but international cast. Uh, I submitted that screenplay to a lab. So let's see, it's a very uh, prestigious international lab. If we get through, it will be very nice because it will just give a new surge, new new lease of life to that story. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's there. But otherwise, I'm writing. I'm writing one more that I'm really enjoying right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are a couple of things, and these two are again little bit big budget. So we are also thinking of writing one based on like you know, ki iska ghar hai, uska ghar hai. <laughs> so we'll have a time out. Ki ye abhi ek saal mein ye dono nee aage badiye. So time out karke we just go to that house and we just shoot it like. Yeah. Uh, one last thing I wanted to ask you was what was what was your uh, five biggest influences in sci-fi, especially sci-fi. Like it could be films, books, shows, or writers in yeah. that sense. So I always uh, I always liked uh, Terry Gilliam a lot because I always liked his absurdity a lot. Uh, you know, so when I saw Twelve Monkeys, I was very impressed by Twelve Monkeys because. All the thing that Bruce, the kind of spacesuit he was wearing. So it was not at all what I was seeing in popular culture as far as science fiction, a spacesuit or time traveling suit is concerned. And the way Brad Pitt was talking, so I was like, this what is this craziness like that? So he was not just creating that world, but he was not taking it too seriously. He was like, you know, having fun with it. So mm-hmm. that I was really liking. I think Michelle Gondry's Eternal Sunshine, Spotless Mind, because I saw it so early, you know, yeah. uh, it was like the. was sci-fi proper thing that i'd seen and it was like you know it just hit me to a lot because of all the uh, you know it was i also felt that there there was a confusion that was deliberately planted in the script 
so which was i felt very respected as a viewer that he was like you know throwing puzzles at me like as a hmm. filmmaker so i was really liking it also like that this is the first time when i see something like a company that erases your memory it's not like the sharp white light company but it's actually a very low rent you know aaj ka bhada diya waisa type ka company hai chote chote rooms so i was really liking again that part of it uh, the third uh, filmmaker i so i always i think when i was in film school i had a, you know you have to choose the director and study him a lot so at that point i'd studied uh, stanley kubrick that was my biggest influence in film school uh, and the sense of geometry that he brings and the sharpness and precision so i i you know so it was very interesting that like of course all the terry gilliam and michel godfrey don't feel precise but i'm sure there's a precision in their head it doesn't uh, come out because of you know they program the the chaos in their stories but there stanley kubrick was so perfect in his frames like you know maze ye in his symbolism and also i really liked his symbolism as such that was uh, third again bachpan mein i had seen a uh, sci-fi mein i had seen matrix okay. uh, when i was a child and uh, not very young but i still uh, old enough to understand that there was a very big philosophy beneath it Hmm. so between all that science fiction between all that action between all that morpheus and you know neo thing there was a very big uh, uh, philosophy which i much later discovered as it's based on bhagavad gita and uh, which we all know but at that point as a child it was uh, setting me to ask me a lot of questions about my own life that am i living in a simulation am i this <laughs> and all so that i was kind of uh, i thought if a film could do that to you it will be very fantastic Huh. so these were like my key uh, like these are the four sci-fi then again i always go back to masters of cinema like you know uh, i always um, i don't know if you know of uh, this uh, youtube channel which has not stopped producing videos but every frame of painting yeah. you might have heard yeah, yeah 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 so i used to like yeah i mean so i mean I, once i was watching a kurosawa video and i just realized that ha huh, matlab we saw it during film school but i never saw these aspects of it so well so those are the other things which we used a lot in cargo the triangle framing of kurosawa mm-hmm. you know uh, we used to always joke i am a cinematographer had this lovely internal joke ki triangle like a triangle <laughs> like you know because we always because all the stories is about two people and see it's again in the same room right same three rooms so how do you frame it differently so we used to always feel that the all three people should be in the same frame one will be in the foreground one will be in the background so that kind of and the use of weather that kurosawa does so effectively the wind and all so my mm. meteor storm is directly uh, uh, in from kurosawa that when there's a turmoil in her life there was a meteor storm outside in the spaceship so you know how i was bringing weather in so those are like those four five things that i was like pretty much you know one influence i clearly saw was uh, the michel gondry one at least i don't i can't remember the name of it there's a dream movie that he made i don't know yeah. some french thing in yeah, the science dream, of sleep. yeah right so the ha. one the, the they when they go back in time i was ha. thinking of that michel gondry film because it felt a lot like that is it wonder yes yes yes, yes, yes stop motion animation i yeah. was so influenced by M- michel gondry that i actually learned stop motion so uh-huh. i actually did a lot of stop motion like tak 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 so i can do even in cargo mein jo chota chota stop motion hai na aur ek to usme of course i have my very close friend zenish who is an animation person who is always there on the side but ek mein wo nahi tha wo chale gaya usko laga ki nahi to wo bhi utta tha hum kar le gaye like you know to thoda thoda stop motion to kar hi dete hain like you know because Uh, i used to like it so much that i used uh-huh. to uh, uh, i wanted to learn what he whatever he knew like <laughs> sure yeah, thank you so much yeah. for your time sorry that i kept you away from your lunch your people no, like a bunch no, of no 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 i'm it's perfect don't worry don't worry it was really nice talking it's really nice meeting filmmakers who are doing other stuff and you know adding to the whole community of filmmaking so it's very wonderful yeah Thank you so much Adir. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you so much and good luck yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from Walkspace.